Hello, everybody. And welcome back. It's been a while since we've done any sort of flipped grammar lessons. So for this week, I was looking at what the topic is, and I thought, I think this would be a good set of lessons to do virtually do flipped like this. Coincidentally, we are going to be talking about my probably one of my personal favorite punctuation marks, the comma. This video series, this series of lessons, there are three of them. And coincidentally, uh, this lesson is about the first usage that we're going to talk about of commas, and that is commas in a series. So since we're starting with commas in a series, I thought it would be fun to do a series about commas. See what I did there? So the first thing that we're talking about is that commas are used to separate items in a series. Now, what is a series? Well, a series is, think of it like a list that consists of three or more items. So if you have a list of three items, four items, five items, six items, 10 items, you would separate each item in that list with a comma. So if we look at this sample sentence, my favorite foods are pizza, sushi, and chicken. In this series, in this list, we are given coincidentally three different types of foods that are this person's favorites. So they tried to list out like, well, I can't say my, my one favorite food because I actually have three. So my three favorite foods or my favorite foods are pizza, comma, sushi, comma, and chicken. Now notice that the last item in the series, we, we're given the clue that the last item in, last item in the series, uh, the chicken is the last one because the word and comes before it. Now, traditionally, there's two schools of thought on this. Some say, all right, well, if you have the word and, then you don't need to use a comma. But I'm from the other belief that you sep use a comma to separate each item in the series, including that last one that would start with and, or, but, or some other conjunction. So we have pizza, comma, sushi, comma, and chicken. So for what we're doing, we are going to use this, what's called the Oxford comma. It's when you use a comma in front of the word and to show that you are separating the two final items in a series or in a list. So like I said, commas are used to separate items in a series and a series consists of three or more items. And a series, it, can't, it doesn't have to be just a list of three words, pizza, sushi, chicken. It could be a series of words, a series of phrase, phrases, or a series of clauses. So first off, let's look at series of words. This summer, we will travel to Milan, Paris, and London. In that series, we're, we have three different, not just three different words, but these are actually the names of three different cities. Notice they are each one word long, Milan, comma, Paris, comma, and London. Milan, Paris, London. And between each, since there are three words, we use two commas, one between Milan and Paris, and then another one between Paris and London. Now, we've talked about this before, but a phrase is a group of words that does not necessarily contain a sub subject and verb pair. It's a collection of words together that have some sort of meaning. So if you're using a comma to separate three phrases, an example would be like the toddler dropped his toy, picked it up, and walked away. So in this series, we have a verb and then something that describes the verb, picked, walked. So really the toddler did three things. He dropped, he picked, he walked. But what did he, what did he drop? His toy. What did he pick? It up, meaning back to his toy. And then what was the last thing he did? He walked away. So in this series, we have dropped his toy, comma, picked it up, comma, and walked away. <clears throat> but 
we can also use commas to to go between clauses. Now, remember, a clause is a group of words that does contain a subject verb pair. A phrase was different because each phrase had a verb, a verb, a verb, but did not have a subject verb pair. So let's look at this series of clauses. At the game, John hit a home run, Anne was walked, and I struck out. So our three clauses, John hit a home run, in that we have a subject, John, and the verb, hit, John hit. Anne is the subject, and then the verb pair was walked. So it shows that it happened in the past. Last one, and I struck out. I is the subject. What did I do? I struck out. So in this, in this sentence, we have something that happens at a game. And there, notice that there's a comma after at the game. I wonder why that's there. Well, that's something for a future lesson. But in this series, it is actually a series of clauses. John hit a home run. Anne was walked. And I struck out. Each of these clauses actually could be its own independent sentence. John hit a home run, period. Anne was walked, period. I struck out, period. But since all three of those happened at the same game, we can combine them into one sentence and separate each clause with a comma. Now, let's look at where the commas belong in each sentence below. Do you prefer cake, pie, or cookies? Well, do you prefer cake, pie, or cookies? Kia woke up, brushed his teeth, and went to school. Now, I gave you a hint there because I actually put in pauses. Without the, without the commas, I would read this as Kia woke up, brushed his teeth, and went to school. Commas are visual clues that we, are, that we need to separate things, and also that as we're reading, to take a small pause. So as I look at this, it says Kia woke up, brushed his teeth, and went to school. Well, what are the things that Kia did? Kia woke up, brushed his teeth, and went to school. So it's separating each of those phrases. What about the last one? The book was interesting, engaging, and humorous. Well, if I look at this sentence, it's telling me three things about the book. The book was interesting. It was engaging and humorous. So each of these sentences have either three words, three phrases, but they're in a series. Now, this is an important part, and this is something that can get a little bit confusing, that items within a series need to follow what's called a parallel structure. So if we think about this word parallel, where have we, where have we seen it before? Well, actually, we see this in math. The word parallel talks in math talks about parallel, like really gets used for parallel lines, lines that run in the same direction, but are separated at each part by the same distance. Kind of like if we look on this screen, we have a bunch of blue lines, because this is meant to mimic a sheet of paper, but we have a bunch of blue lines that each are running in the same direction, and they're all parallel. So each of these lines is similar. Likewise, in grammar, parallel structure means that they have a similar, similar grammatical structure. So if they are all three words, if they are, they are all three phrases or all three clauses, when we are using commas to separate a series, they all need to have a similar structure. So they need to all be individual words, all be phrases, or all be clauses. So for instance, Lainey plays baseball or basketball, baseball, and is on the chess team. There's something weird about that. I have three parts of this series. I have, and he, he does three different things, plays baseball or basketball, baseball, so each of those are two words, but then the last part of the series is on the chess team. Well, that's a phrase. 
So there's got to be a better way to write this. Either I have to write all three items in the series as phrases or basketball, baseball is on the chess team. So I need to write the, Laney plays basketball, plays baseball, and is on the chess team. Or I change that so that each part of the series is a word. So now I have Laney plays basketball, baseball, and chess. Those are the three different things that Laney plays. Now, if I wanted to show that he was on each a team for each of those, I would have to rewrite this as Laney is on the basketball team, the baseball team, and the chess team. But if I'm trying to emphasize that these are the things that he plays or that he does, I have to shorten that last one from is on the chess team to just be the word chess. So that shows that each thing in the series has a similar grammatical structure. It is just one word. So that first one, not parallel, but now we have something, an example of parallel structure. The last part, and this is kind of a bonus, is this little guy right here. Has anybody seen this before? Good. This is what's called an ampersand. And an ampersand is a symbol that actually means and. And it's used in informal writing, in company names. Uh, I use a lot in text messages, but it's used, it's a shortened way of saying the word and a shortened way of writing it. And on your keyboard, if you hit shift and seven, it will make this symbol. So like, for instance, jo the, the company Johnson & Johnson. I don't read that as Johnson ampersand Johnson. We read that symbol as the word and. The, but with a ampersand, a comma does not come before that. So if I put I like swimming, running, and hiking, even though I read that ampersand as the word and, we do not use a comma in front of that. So you see between swimming, running, and hiking, there is no comma between running and hiking. So with that, we have come to the end of lesson one. So this is the way that we will see the mo uh, commas used the most is to separate items in a series. But remember, the most important thing is to make sure that that series has a parallel structure, that it is either all words, all phrases, or all clauses. When you start mixing them, it gets kind of confusing and it does not have a parallel structure. So as good writers, as good readers, as students of grammar, students of this wonderfully confusing English language that we have, we use commas to separate items in a series, but those series, those items need to also have the same structure. So have a wonderful rest of your day. Good luck on the assignment and I will see you for lesson number two.